overlook Palm Sunday. Uh, we want to thank you for coming. Boy, isn't it isn't it beautiful to have these kids in the in the church house? Let's give the Lord a big praise offering for them. Praise the Lord. Glad to be in the house of the Lord today. But I was thinking about here in the scriptures in Mark chapter eleven. Let's go there. In Mark chapter eleven. Uh, starting around verse 8. The Bible says, here in verse, let's go to verse 7. First of all, let's just stand up and pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this service today. We thank you for the people that are here. God, we ask you, God, to touch the scriptures. Touch me. Oh, God, touch this mind of mine. And God, touch us, Lord, and, and touch these lips of clay one more time, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you realize today is Palm Sunday? It was the week before Jesus was crucified. Jesus came to Jerusalem, the Bible says. And it says here in Mark chapter 11, verse 7, And they brought a coat to Jesus and cast uh, their garments on him and set him upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches. That's why they call it Palm Sunday. And other cut down branches off of trees and strawed them in the way. And they and they went and they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise, would you? Hosanna, Hosanna. And you can just imagine Jesus coming into Jerusalem riding on a donkey that nobody's ever rode, has ever ridden before. This donkey was, was uh, saved particularly for Jesus to ride into Jerusalem. But it's amazing to me that here comes Jesus into Jerusalem on a donkey. And he comes in here on a donkey and everybody is praising God because Jesus was coming to Jerusalem through the, down the Kidron Valley all the way through the front gates of Jerusalem and they were spreading out garments on the ground and branches on the ground. And as they were spreading these garments and these branches on the ground, you can find, praise the Lord, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, our king has come. Uh, the day has come. They thought, they thought that Jesus was coming uh, to stay, but this was the first coming of Jesus. This is when Jesus came the first time, hallelujah, to show us uh, and to save us, to give, to give us salvation that we have today, praise the Lord. But it's amazing to me how that, that when Jesus came to Jerusalem, you can read in the scriptures the first thing uh, that he did when he came to Jerusalem. We find that he came in and he looked around. Uh, if you go to uh, verse 11, it says, And he entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he looked around about, uh, it was now evening tide, and came... And they went out to Bethany uh, with the twelve. The Bible says he went out with Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, the Bible says on the morrow when he was come from Bethany, he uh, was hungry, the Bible says. So we find that Jesus was hungry because he had ridden into Jerusalem uh, on a donkey and he looked all around and he was looking around. He was looking. What was Jesus looking for? He was looking to see how, what the state of the church was in. Today, God is looking right now to see what the state of the church is in. Do you know that when Jesus came in on that donkey, do you know what happened? The Bible says he looked around. 
And while they were singing holy and, and hosanna, hosanna, and they were praising him, he wasn't, he wasn't liking what he saw. He didn't like what he saw. But the Bible says he got hungry, and he came up to this fig tree, and the Bible says when he came up to this fig tree, it had all the leaves that it was supposed to have. It looked just like a fig tree that was ready to pick and to eat. It just made him that much hungrier. Praise the Lord. When Jesus looked at this fig tree, it made him look so, it made him so hungry. Praise the Lord. Uh, by the time he got to that fig tree and he looked under them leaves, because if you, if you'll notice on a fig tree, uh, uh, they have big leaves and underneath the leaves is the figs. And, uh, when he checked out the fig tree, it didn't have no figs on it. It didn't have no fruit on it. And whenever he checked out the fig tree and it didn't have no fruit on it, uh, he cursed that fig tree, the Bible says. He cursed that fig tree, you know. And, uh, and, and so what the Lord is saying in this passage of Scripture, he's dealing with the spiritual lies. He's dealing with uh, a spiritual thing here because he don't want us to look like a full-grown fig tree producing fruit, but whenever he checks us out, we don't have no fruit. Meaning, it, he don't want us to look like a Christian and live like the devil. Do you hear what I'm talking about? The Lord does not want you to look like a Christian and live like the devil. So when he came, he was hungry, and the Bible says he came to the fig tree, and he cursed that fig tree, and the disciples heard it, the Bible says. And you go on to verse 15, and the Bible says he came into Jerusalem, hallelujah, and went into the temple, the Bible says. And the Bible says, begin to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. And overthrow the tables. Now this is Jesus now. Overthrow the tables and the money changers that set uh, and, uh, and, and them that sold doves. So here comes Jesus into the, here comes Jesus into the, uh, into the temple of God, thinking he was going to find a prayer warrior boot, uh, bunch, thinking he was going to find uh, a fruit in the church, thinking that the church was going to be good, but whenever he come in, all they were doing was buying and selling. All they, all they were doing was selling turtle doves and 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 exchanging money and all they thought about is the money and all they thought about was the things that was going on in the temple at that time uh, they were supposed to be bearing fruit like the fig tree we're supposed to bear fruit we're supposed to get up every day and bear fruit like the fig tree so when Jesus came in riding on a donkey, he found out that he was hungry. He, did, he couldn't find no figs. He went into the temple, and he turned over the tables. Man, I tell you what, that sounds like an angry preacher to me, don't it, you? Praise the Lord. That tells me that Jesus got angry sometimes. Praise the Lord. That means it's okay to be angry sometimes, but sin not. Do you hear me? But Jesus was trying to get the church in order because the church somehow or another had uh, focused on other things instead of the things of the Lord. And the Bible says in verse 17, the Bible says, And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? We should come to church praying, not wondering what we're going to eat after church all the time. Not wondering what group we're going to go meet up with at the church. We should, we should come to church praying. Should, it, the Bible says, Is it not written that my house should be called of all nations the house of prayer? But you have made it a den of lions because you've turned it into something else than what it's supposed to be. And that's what's going on today. Today you're going to hear about Jesus in this church. 
You're going to always hear about Jesus in this church. You're always going to hear about the things of the Lord because that's what we're interested in. We want to hear about Jesus. We want to know about Jesus. And when Jesus comes to this church, I don't want him turning over tables. I don't want him, I don't want him thinking about uh, nothing but uh, a people of prayer. Do you hear me, church? We don't want the church to become a, a house of dens. Uh, uh, you know, of uh, thieves. God does not want us to be a den of thieves. He don't want us uh, uh, just coming to church just to see what we can get or what we can get out of God. But He wants us to come and use the altar and have a, a time of prayer again. God wants us to get, get down and pray because there's another time coming that Jesus is coming and it's called the second coming. Do you hear what I'm talking about? Jesus is coming again. But when he came, the first coming, when he came riding in on a donkey, that he came riding in on that donkey and he had, and Jesus came on business for the king. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. And when we come to church, we should come to church coming on, uh, on business for the king. We should come to church prayed up. We should come to church. And, and if we're not prayed up and we're not Christians, we should run to the altar because that's the, the, that's the place that we're going to find God. You can't find God, hallelujah, trying to buy this and buy that. You can't find God going to a church that, that always focuses on what's going on and what's hip and what's cool and who's popular and who's not uh, trying to be the big eye and hallelujah I'd rather be the little you and go into heaven than to be the big eye and go into hell do you hear what I'm talking about <laughs> hallelujah that's what I'm trying to say to you today we need to understand that there's always people there trying to kill us the Bible says the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they would destroy him talking they wanted to destroy Jesus for they feared they feared him because of the people who was astonished at his doctrine and when and it, and when evening was come he went out of the city but when i was reading about Jesus coming in on palm sunday how that they worshiped him and and they put out garments and how they throwed out the leaves. It's a funny thing to me. It just took a week. It just took a week for them to crucify the Lord. It just took a week. It just, uh, one week later, Jesus was crucified because people, somehow or another, their praise left them. So somehow or another, their praise left them. I believe it was because when Jesus came, they was looking for a warrior, not a lover. Do you hear what I'm saying? A lot of people is looking for a warrior, looking for a warrior and not a lover. But we, but at that time, Jesus came to love, not to destroy. Jesus came to love and to get the church in order. Jesus came to die and to and and to and to save us. From all of our sin. You know we don't have to worry about the sin debt. Because you know what? When we ask God to forgive us. The Bible says. It's the blood of Jesus. That forgives us. Do you hear what I'm saying? Whenever we trust in the Lord. When we do what God tells us to do. Praise the Lord. Do you know that? Hallelujah. We're going to find Jesus coming back. In the second coming. He's not going to ride on a lowly donkey. But he's coming back with a white stallion. Do you hear me? Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. He's coming back with a white stallion. Praise the Lord. We can talk about what Jesus did on Palm Sunday. And we can talk about how he came in and he dealt with the fig tree. And we can talk about how he dealt with the temple and how he turned the tables over in the temple. And he got the temple back in order uh, and telling them that this place is going to be called of all nations of the house of prayer. We're going to, this place should be a house of prayer. It should be spiritual. And I want to tell you something today. When you come to the Smyrna Church of God, I want it to be spiritual. 
I want you to feel the Spirit of God. I want you to know that we're a people that believes in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that we believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that we believe in baptizing in the name of the Lord and the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Do you hear me, church? I want you to know, church, when Jesus comes, we've got to be ready. Praise the Lord. We've got to be ready. We can't be like the fig tree. We cannot be like the fig tree that is not ready. We've got to be ready, church, because when Jesus comes, he's not giving no more warnings. He's already given us all kinds of warnings. And he said the house of God should be a house of prayer. Praise the Lord. And we find that when it came back up on the fig tree, and the fig tree was withered up from the root, the Bible says, because Jesus cursed it, because it looked like a Christian. It looked like it was spiritual. But when he looked at it, and he couldn't find no fruit, when God looks at you and he can't find no fruit, what good are you to heaven? What good are you to the church? You're no good to the church, according to the, according to the victory, the Bible says. We've got to understand that Jesus is coming again. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 19 and verse 11, the Bible says, And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Meaning when he comes back again, he's going to do just like he did in the first coming. In the second coming, he's coming back to make war according to God's word. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says his eyes is as flames of fire and, his, and, and on his head were many crowns. And he had uh, the name written that no man knew but he himself. The Bible says, And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Meaning that he's coming back again. And when he comes back again, he's coming back. You know that cape dipped in blood, meaning he's coming back in war, praise the Lord. He's going to put the He's going to put the armies of the world in order. He's going to put the governments in order. He's going to put everything in order. He's coming back as King of Kings and as Lord of Lords. And the Bible says He's going to have many crowns upon His head. <laughs> Hallelujah! Do you hear what I'm talking about? And the Bible says His name is the Word of God. Do you hear me, Church? Here we are. The Bible says, and the armies which are which are in heaven following him upon white horses clothed in fine linen and white clothes. That, that tells me that there's animals in heaven, praise the Lord. That tells me that whenever we come back with Jesus, the Bible says on the second coming when Jesus comes back, praise the Lord, and the armies of heaven come back, do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says we're coming back with white clothes on, clean clothes. We're going to be clean. We're going to have the best robes on. We're going to have horses. Hallelujah. Where's Paisley at? Praise the Lord. Is she here today? Hallelujah. She likes them horses. Do you hear me? Praise the Lord. The Bible says not only is Jesus coming back on a white stallion. He's not coming back like he did the first coming on a, on a donkey, but he's coming back the second time on a white stallion. Hallelujah. And not only is Jesus coming back the word of God, but the Bible says the armies which were in heaven following him upon white horses, which is us clothed in fine linen and white clothes. The Bible says, and, and listen to this, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp uh, a sharp sword which uh, a, sh a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and the and uh, the Bible says and he shall tread upon the wine press and the fierce and the fierce and the and and the wrath of the Almighty do you hear what I'm talking about today? What I'm trying to tell you today, church, the King of Kings is coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back on a white horse, not on a donkey. 
Do you hear me, church? He came the first time as the humble king, but the next time he's coming back as the brave and the warrior king. He's coming back with the white horses. Hallelujah, church. God wants you to know today that he's got a white horse for you. All you've got to do is call upon his name and call upon the name of the Lord and know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Hallelujah. He's the only way to escape what's going to happen. In church. I don't want God turning my table over. I don't want God turning my stuff over. I want God to know that whenever he comes in, I'm doing what He's what he called me to do. Praise the Lord. The Bible says be faithful until the end. Do what God has called you to do. Be what God's called you to be. And the Bible says not only is the King of Kings coming in with a white horse, but the armies of heaven. Every one of us is is going to have our own white horse. Do you hear what I'm saying? And we're going to have brand new clothes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we're going to tread. I mean, it's, we're going to tread upon the wrath of the Almighty God. Do you hear me, church? That means underneath the wrath of the Almighty God are the devil and the disobedient and the kingdoms of this world that's going to be overthrown. But one of these days, church, the Bible Bible says Jesus is coming back on that white horse and we're going to tread upon the wrath of the Almighty God. Do you hear me, church? The Bible says he treadeth on the wine press. Hallelujah. He treadeth upon the wine press and on the wrath of the, the Almighty God. Do you hear me, church? The Bible says and he hath uh, and he has hallelujah and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Meaning that's the statement. That's the end of it. That's Hallelujah. That's just the way it's going to be. And the devil can't do nothing about it. Praise the Lord. The devil can't do nothing about it because he, uh, Jesus is the only one. He's the Savior. He's the God of heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I wanted to do today, I wanted to kind of give you a comparison of what he did in the first coming on Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday, he came in and he cursed the fig tree because it looked like a Christian. It looked like it was a fruitful uh, fig tree, but it wasn't bearing no fruit. Do you hear me, church? God don't want you looking like a Christian. He wants you to be a Christian. And if you, if you want to be a Christian today, you know how you be a Christian today? I'll tell you how you, become, how you become a Christian today. You get down on your knees and ask God to come into your heart and say, Lord, I want to be a part of that second coming. Lord, I want to go in the rapture of the church. I want to be a part of that second coming. I want my white horse, God. I want, I, want, I want to be a part of the house of prayer, Father, forever and ever. Praise the Lord. How many of you want to be a part of the house of prayer forever and ever? Praise the Lord. Well, if you want to be a part of the house of prayer forever and ever, you've got to get Jesus in your heart. You can't make it to heaven without the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's the only one that can save you today. I can't save you. I wish I could touch you. I wish I could command you to go to heaven, but I can't save you. But you know what will save you today is when you get down on your knees and you believe in the blood shed that Jesus shed 2,000 years for you ago for you. Praise the Lord. When you get down on your knees just like this, praise the Lord, and you ask the Lord to come into your heart and say, Lord, come into my heart today. Lord, I believe in that blood sh that was shed 2,000 years ago. And let the Lord Jesus come into your heart and deal with you. And, and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. And Jesus will come into your heart. And whenever He comes in the second coming, praise the Lord, you'll already be with Him because the rapture of the church would have already took place. Church, hallelujah. Quit looking for the next great revival. Quit looking for the next great preacher that's going to get up and preach. Just look for the gospel to be preached today. Hallelujah. Today I'm preaching the gospel to you. I'm telling you how to make it to heaven. I'm telling you that whenever God's, God's not only going to change your vile bodies to be 
be fashioned like unto his body. But the Bible says he's going to give you brand new clothes and a brand new white horse. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you won't have to buy no, hallelujah, you won't have to buy no car when you get to heaven. You're going to have your own white horse assigned to you. Do you hear me, church? Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you today, church, we need to understand. Hallelujah. The Bible says he is called the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he, the, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heavens, Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. Church, one of these days we're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. One of these days we're going to be able to hang out with this Jesus that came in Jerusalem riding on a lonely donkey that nobody else has ever wrote, ridden before. He didn't want something that somebody done ridden down, but he came riding in on a lonely donkey. Praise the Lord. And he dealt with the church. Do you hear me, church? He dealt with the church. He dealt with their sins. He dealt with what they were going, uh, what they were going through. And he's going to come back again, and he's going to deal with you. Come on, musicians. Come on, musicians. He's coming back again. And whenever he comes back on that white horse, the Bible says he's going to deal with us. Praise the Lord. With the whole world, I mean. He's already, he's already made a way for the Christian. You don't have to, you don't have to endear the wrath of God. You don't have to endear the wrath of God. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to go through the wrath of God. All you've got to do today is believe the gospel. Praise the Lord. Why do you want to look like something that you're not? Why do we want to look like a Christian and not really be a Christian? I don't know about you. That sounds like a miserable state of mind to me, to look like something that I'm not. I want to be the real deal. I want to be the real McCoy, as they say. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want, I want, hallelujah. I want to, I want the heavens open. I want to be there with God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Do you hear what I'm talking about? He says, and I saw the heavens open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Hallelujah. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. Meaning he's coming back, Sister Mary. And whenever he comes back, he's going to deal with the world. Do you hear me? And he's going to set the world in order. Hallelujah. Right now, everything is out of order. Right now, it seems like the devil's getting away with murder. Hallelujah. But Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. When he comes back, he's going to get rid of the false prophet. He's going to get rid of the devil and everything that the devil has done. Do you hear what I'm talking about, church? We need to we need to hear this this morning. Hallelujah. There's a Savior and He's coming after you, but you've got to believe in what God is telling you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, all you got to do is believe. believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we talk about Palm Sunday, I wanted to talk about the risen Savior that's coming back. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk about Him more next week. Oh, on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday. This Sunday, it's not Resurrection Sunday, it's Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday that Jesus came in riding on a donkey, getting the church to the place that is called the house of prayer instead of the uh, den of thieves. Do you hear what I'm talking about, church? You would stand your feet all over the building. Realize that Jesus loves you today. Yeah. And it's time to quit. It's time to quit thinking about life is going to last forever because it's not. Life is not going to last forever. Do you know it? The longer you live, the more you realize that things change. Nothing, Brother Anthony, ever stays the same. I wished it did. I wished it did, but it don't. Nothing ever stays the same. Things change. I remember when I was a little boy that my grandpa Mofield told me. I was driving down the road and he was singing that song. When the sun coming up in the morning like an eagle to the sky. Something like that. 
And I said, Paul, what are you singing at? He said, I'm enjoying this good sunny day. And I was riding down the road, and he says, look, son, he says, one of these days, he says, enjoy every day that you get because one of these days, uh, it's all going to change. I said, no, I don't want it to change, Paul. He says, it's going to change. He says, it's going to change. It always does. And years later, I can go back to my hometown, and the very road he told me that I own is not even a road anymore. Things has changed. Church, things changes, and that's why we need to get our lives and ourselves in church believing in Jesus. Yes. And being that real fig tree, when Jesus is hungry and he comes and he checks your fruit, you'll have plenty of fruit under that fig leaf, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a cursed fig tree. I want to be a fig tree that's bearing fruit yes. year after year, day Lord after day. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to give an altar call this morning. He's going to sing a song. And if you want to come and, and pray, right now is the time to come and pray. We'll pray with you. And we'll give you prayer. Come on if you want to pray this morning. Page 10, brother. Meeting in the air. You have heard of little Moses in the bulrush. You have heard of Phyllis David. And